When it comes to promises made to individuals, God has always chosen righteous and faithful men to make promises to. We have already mentioned a couple, Abraham and David, and there are others you know. There have been promises made to large numbers of people, the nation of Israel. Those promises were given on a conditional basis, though. The generation that was delivered from Egypt was not the generation that went into Canaan. Unbelief eliminated them even after they had spied out the promised land. <clears throat> There was a generation of Abraham's offspring that went captive into Babylon while the land lay desolate. There was a generation in Jerusalem. These are people that the promises were given to, is what I'm talking about here. There was a generation in Jerusalem that the Romans decimated. Now, it doesn't matter who you are or who you are related to or what promises have been made to you. Sin will keep you out. You can be the son of Isaac and the grandson of Abraham. But if you despise the inheritance, you won't receive it, <clears throat> and you'll be cut off. Amen. Now, this was, speaking from a human level as a man, this was a major problem when Father Adam sinned. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Through the offense of one, many be dead. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. By one man's offense, death reigned by one. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. And this was before the law was given. And then the law entered that the offense might abound. Yeah. Now the law was not to show us the way, as some have alleged. The law did not help mankind by showing them how to please God. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin." Now, there is, there is a promise for those in this condition, but it's not a good promise. This is in Ezekiel 18, verses 4 and verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. That's a promise. However, that is not the kind of promise that we're looking for. The promises of God in our text are promises for good. Now, to further distance us from the promises of God... Being Gentiles has no advantage. <clears throat> the nation of Israel was full of sinners too. And we know in Romans, Paul says both Jews and Gentiles, they are all under sin. Yet the promises were made to them and not to Gentiles. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. The thing that distinguishes Israelites from Gentiles is not their behavior, not that they are without sin, and not even their faith, but Abraham. The promises were actually given to Abraham, and since Israel is Abraham's offspring, the promises given to Abraham belong to Israel. When the Lord remembers Abraham, he's merciful to Israel. If it were not for Abraham, Israel would not be a nation and would have no promises of God. Israel's connection to God's promises is Abraham. If they could meet the conditions for obtaining the promises, which to this day they have not done as a nation, at least they had knowledge of God's promises as they were uttered to them by Moses and the prophets. But no prophet was sent to the Gentiles. No law was delivered by an angel to the Gentiles. The promises of God were not disseminated among the Gentiles. As Gentiles, this puts us far off from God and his great promises. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called a circumcision in the flesh made by hands, 
that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. That connects them with God. But we were aliens from that, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now, again, this is in addition to having our mouths stopped by the law. In addition to that. This is in addition to being sinners, living under the fear of death and bondage to it. <clears throat> As if that were not far enough from God, being Gentiles disqualifies us from the promises too. Now the first promise was preached to Eve, but Eve didn't see it fulfilled. Actually, it was more like just an announcement that God was making to the human race in general. The promise of the seed of the woman bruising the serpent's head was somewhat of a generalization from, from Eve's point of view, since Eve was the mother of the whole race. See, so here's the mother of the whole race receives this promise. Now the promise, in a sense, is it goes out to the whole race. Who, who is this? We don't know at this point. But God began to narrow the promise down over the passing of time. And we, go, we can go to Noah. Noah started the earth all over again. So somewhere after Noah, the promise had to come after him. And then the promises were made to Abraham. Narrows it down quite a bit. <clears throat> and then to Isaac, his son. And then to Jacob, Isaac's son. So the, the promise here in Abraham, it narrows down real quick, real quick. It's getting down to just a select group of people. But it wasn't Ishmael, it was Isaac. It wasn't Esau, it was Jacob. And the promise went with Jacob and his sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. So now all Gentiles are eliminated, which... I will remind you, is the greater portion of the rest of the earth is Gentiles. We're just talking about a little bitty nation of people. <clears throat> There's a promised land. The law is given to Moses. A new covenant is promised. Prophets foretell of the coming of the Savior who will come to Israel. The whole nation of Israel has knowledge of these promises, and they look for them to be fulfilled to some extent. But God gets even more specific later on. And he makes a wonderful promise to David. Now, it sounded different from what was spoken to Eve, but actually we know this is all the same promise that we're talking, that, talking about, that God gave to Eve, that he gave to Abraham, that he gave to David. This is actually all the, he, he's all, he's talking about one thing he's going to do in all these promises stated in different ways. <clears throat> So now there's a specific promise that has excluded the other families and tribes of Israel and is given only to the house of David. And the Gentiles were getting farther and farther away from the promises and farther from God and farther from hope. <clears throat> we know from the expounding of the Apostle Paul that this specific promise to Abraham concerning a seed and to David concerning a man sitting on his throne and the promise to Israel of God making a new covenant with them are all promises about one person, Jesus Christ. Eventually, the promise would even narrow down further when the angel appeared to Mary and spoke to her, you are going to have the son. Now, it would seem like, uh, from one point of view, that this is, this, the promise has been narrowed down to, to one person that cuts everyone all, all else off, but you see the gospel is that this one person is going to open it up to the whole human Amen. race. Amen. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing that God is doing. <clears throat> Jesus is the key to all of the promises. When Jesus came to put away sin, all were under sin, both Jew and Gentile. Although Israel was given the fathers, the prophets, the covenants, the promises, they still had not obtained the promise when Jesus came. Although they are Israelites, sin and unbelief has excluded them just as it has the Gentiles. At this point, let us remember what qualified Abraham to receive the promises, and that is faith. Now, this is no small point for this same thing that gives both Jews and Gentiles access to all the promises of God. Israel had the promises but were excluded because of sin, 